Welcome back everyone to another Mech Stack Tech. Today we have another custom build as requested by Nick L in our last video. We're going to go with Mill utilizing none other than Bruvac, the Grand Eloquence. <laughs> Before we get going, I've noticed only 2% of you are actually subscribed to the channel. We're aiming to grow larger and expand the type of Magic the Gathering content we put out here. And your subs will help us go, you know, get to that goal. Uh, but let's get started. Uh, so this is my fiance's deck. I actually don't play a ton of mill myself, but with Bruvac at the helm, it can end quickly. We have a ton of ways to mill our opponents in this deck, and Bruvac is going to double all of our mill effects, making them twice as deadly. Starting off with Planeswalkers, we have two versions of Jace in the form of Memory Adept, which can draw us cards and mill a little. Mill one player for 10, or if we've built up a little, let us draw 20 cards. We could also allow our opponents to draw 20 cards, and depending on how low everyone's decks are, it could be a good idea. We also have Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, which allows us an alternate win con if we manage to mill ourselves out, but also mill an opponent for a little and eventually draw 7 cards. Moving into our creature based mill, we have Ruin Crab, which has Landfall, we're going to mill 3. Uh, with the amount of card draw we have in the deck, hitting our land drops every turn should be pretty easy, and it can chump block some smaller creatures early on. Shadowkin is going to mill everyone at upkeep and become a copy of a creature that was milled this way. And lastly, for our creature based mill, we have the Undead Alchemist, who will deal damage in the form of milling cards, and whatever a creature is milled this, uh, mill just in general. We're going to create a 2-2 zombie to add to our defenses, uh, which could also potentially milk some cards based on the undead alchemist itself, because it doesn't just, you know, make it so it's dealing damage that way, it's any zombie. You know, I said he was last, but I was a liar. <laughs> we do have the Wall of Lost Thoughts, which enters and will mill a single player for four cards, and is a nice little, uh, little defender, nice little four bot. We don't have a lot of, uh, a lot of creature based mill, obviously, right? We had like, what, three, four cards? But our instants and sorceries are really gonna make up for it. Starting off with the Bond of Insight, which is pulling double duty, because it's going to mill everyone for four, allowing us to recover two instants or sorceries from our grave. Uh, so this is gonna allow us to grab back some more of our bigger mill cards. Uh, Bond of Insight does get exiled, so it couldn't target itself even if it wanted to. But, uh, you know, we like the mill, we like the recovery of other instant and sorceries that let us mill people. Fractured Sentinel will mill each opponent for 14, and in a pinch could be cycled away to let us draw a card, still milling every one of our opponents for 4 in the process. Maddening Cacophony hits for 8, but we're really going to kick it every time we play it, milling each opponent for half their library. And if Bruvac's out, we effectively have just milled their entire library, and when it gets to their turn and they can't draw a card, they just lose. We also have Tosh's Hideous Laughter, which isn't mill per se, but it's close enough. This one goes in to mill based on mana value. And depending on the curve the opponent's playing and how many lands are still in their deck, this could actually hit for a ton. Traumatize, much like the Maddening Cacophony, is going to mill half the deck and with Bruvac out, could easily be a nice like way for us to just end the game. Drowning Dreams is another lovely wombo combo because it acts as both card draw and mill. Assuming we have our commander out, we get to do both, otherwise it's like a nice situational choice. And we can decide how deadly we want to make this thing based on the X cost. We only have one artifact mill card and that comes in the form of the Folio of Fancies. Uh, so Folio of Fancies is also pulling double duty in the sense that it could draw each player, you know, X number of cards. A little expensive at double X, but, you know, if people are low in terms of how much they have left, definitely in, like a nice way to maybe force a win. Uh, but we're really here to mill each player for the number of, or each opponent rather, for how many cards are in their hand. Moving into the enchantments that really make this deck sing, they're a little bit more consistent, right? They're hanging out longer, they're they're doing repeated mill for us. We have the Court of Cunning. So it's going to introduce Monarch when it enters the game, 
and uh, it's going to mill each opponent for at least two on each of our upkeeps. If we did manage to maintain Monarch, we're also going to, instead of milling them for two, mill them for ten. Not always a guarantee, obviously, but, you know, definitely something to keep in mind. Curse of Unbinding is going to mill one player until they mill a creature, which we get for free at each of their upkeeps. Which really adds to our defenses. And if they're not playing a heavy creature-based deck, right, they're playing a lot of spell-slingy type stuff, this could easily mill their entire library. Psychic Corrosion is going to punish our opponents for us drawing cards. And we have a ton of ways in this deck to draw extra cards, which we'll get to in just a little bit. The Fairy's Tutelage is basically the same thing, only it has the added benefit of us drawing a card when it ETBs. We've mentioned a lot of ways to draw cards, so let's see what we've missed so far. We have Drawn from Dreams, lets us take the top, take two of the top seven cards into our hand from our library, put the rest in the bottom, and while this isn't technically drawn as far as the triggers go, it doesn't allow us a lot of card selection. We have Sift, which is going to let us draw three, discard one. Windfall is a little group huggy for my taste, but it does force every player to discard their entire hand and then draw cards equal to the highest number of cards discarded this way, which can let us dig deep, and with our opponents being milled the whole time, could just end the game. Brainstorm is our classic cantrip that lets us draw three and put two cards from our hand back on top, so it's really good card selection, and it's technically, you know, us drawing three cards. Exclude is actually a counter spell, but it does have a nice little card draw sort of tacked on there for us. End of the story, let's just draw four cards, almost always for just three mana. Leaving the Dust is actually a bounce spell, but again, we have that card draw just sort of stapled onto it. Neutralize is a counter spell, but in a pinch, we could always go ahead and cycle it away to just draw a card. Curiosity is a nice way for us to benefit from a creature hitting an opponent, uh, you know, be that our creature or someone else's. We're going to draw a card every time that creature deals damage to an opponent, and it's twice as nice if that creature happens to have double strike, because there will be two instances of damage from that creature, which means two cards. You know it and you love it, it's Rhystic Study. Uh, so this is going to tax our opponents for even just, like, you know, playing the game. If they can't or don't want to pay that tax, we're going to draw a card. So we're kind of low on creatures in this deck, and we're milling everyone, so we're probably not going to last long if we don't protect ourselves. But creatures like Fogbank, who's a pillow fort that's going to prevent all combat damage dealt to and by it, is a nice way to do that. Guard Gamazoa is basically just Fogbank, but a little bigger, and he gets to hit back. Silent Arbiter is going to reduce combat down to one creature versus one creature. Slowing our opponents down, you know, basically to a halt if they're doing some sort of creature-based, combat-based strategy. Aetherize is going to bounce back all attacking creatures to their owner's hand. A nice way to be like, oh, I'm going to lose to this combat because I don't have, you know, enough blockers or, you know, the creature's just too big and has trample. Aether Rise, get out of here. Engulf the Shore is going to return all creatures who have toughness less than or equal to the number of islands we control, and because this is a mono blue deck, we have a lot of islands. Evacuation doesn't care how many islands we have, we're just saying all creatures, back to owner's hands. Fading Hope is going to bounce back a single creature, and if it was a low cost creature, we get to scry, a little bit of card selection for us. Unsubstantiate could return a spell or a creature. In the case of a spell, it effectively is countered. Uh, and in the form of a creature, you know, it's just bounced back as normal. Winds of Rebuke is also going to bounce back a non-land permanent. Could be a creature, could be, you know, really any non-land permanent. Generally speaking, I think we go for creatures. Ah, uh, and then they're also going to mill two. Nice little, little bit of mill on top. As a treat. Just a patient fear is gonna bounce back a permanent for dealing damage to us. A nice way to say, hey, 
you actually don't want swinging creatures at me, you're gonna have to recast them. It gets expensive. Frogify is obviously just a nice way to be like, hey, that's a nice creature you got with some nice abilities. What if they were just a 1 1 frog with no abilities, though? Narcolepsy in a similar vein is gonna keep a creature tapped down. Propaganda is gonna tax our opponents for trying to attack us. And War Tax allows us to add taxes on. We get to set how high those taxes are. And with enough mana open, you know, people are going to stay away. We've also got a handful of counter spells to stop threats before they even hit the board in the form of counter spell, disallow, dissipate, mystic dispute, saw it coming, and whirlwind denial. Are there cards you expected to see but didn't? Are there cards you question being in here? Is there a commander or mechanic you want to see a build around? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this content and want to see more deck techs, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you want to get some help with your builds or even play commander with me over spell table, feel free to join our discord. And until next time guys, good luck with those builds.